download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. Hey, what is improvisation? What a stupid question to ask Klaus. It's just, you know, coming up with stuff, right? Come up with stuff. <laughs> So, improvisation is taught in the following way. We learn some scales, right? You preferably in the first position, minor pentatonic, and then perhaps a couple of licks, right? And then we say, okay, then come up with stuff, right? I can show you the scales, man, and I can show the, you the licks, but it's up to you to make something happen with that. No, it's not. Well, it can be if nobody helps you, but I'm gonna help you, first of all, understand what the f is going on. Why is it so hard to come up with stuff, you know? When the music is playing, play some stuff. Well, okay. But what is really, what is the discipline here? What's the game? What are the rules? How do I do this, right? And nobody tells you to, how, you know. So let's, first of all, let's define what is improvisation. And I'm talking on an academic level of, you know, improvisation is uh, leaning into the music and then releasing the inner spirit that will then, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about on a practical level. What is going on in the brain? Because if we can understand that, then we can surely learn it as well. We can make it a science instead of an art form. It is an art form, but you can't paint a, a, a picture unless you know the techniques and the colors. And, you know, you can, but it will be severely limited by the fact that you don't know what you're doing, basically, right? So we need to know what we're doing. We need to know exactly what it is. What is it, right? Once you know what improvisation is, then you can learn to, to do it afterwards. So let's talk about it. Because I used, to, I used to wonder about this, right? It's like you have a box. This is you, this is your brain. It's your box, right? And from that box comes something new, right? That's, that's the, the idea anyway, right? You have a, a, a closed system here and then you are able to just bam, produce something that the world has never heard before, right? That's improvisation. You improvise something, right? Like creating a new story, like creating a new painting. You create something new, quote unquote, from nothing, right? Why are you saying this, Klaus? What's your point? Well, my point is that nothing new ever comes from anybody. We never actually create something new because that, that's why we talk about inspiration coming from above. That's why we talk about, you know, little fairies and muses that just, you know, I don't know where it came from because every time you really come up with something new, right? Like a song that's just, wow, this is great. You have that feeling that I didn't create this. I don't know where it came from. It's like it came from above. It's just inspiration. But all these words are just words for magic, basically, right? We, we don't know. We can't put our finger on it. We can't scientific, you know, we can't explain it scientifically. So we just invent a magical realm of inspiration. But that's really not the case here. It's, it doesn't come from there. It doesn't come from the outside, right? That's our explanation. It's like, okay, and when you come up with something new, it's like, wow, I didn't know I could create that. Well, you know, it's your brain. It's amazing, that brain. But we basically attribute this to magic, to inspiration, like all these, we have all these words here, right? And so on. That we, that comes into the box and out comes something new. But that is not the case. Basically what goes on is that you teach your brain, you give it some building blocks. That's what it's good at. You give it some building blocks, like, uh, you know, a whole box of Lego blocks. And it looks at them and say, okay, where does the red one go? And I can combine that with the green. Oh, I see a house suddenly. Let's build a house. And then you try to build a wall. But suddenly it's like, this looks like a castle. And then you start building a castle. But then, you know, I need more towers over here. And images appear in your head. And you start building all of that. And suddenly when you step back, you know, a couple of days after that or later, building, 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 you see like, wow, wow, that's a cool castle. And it might be an airport, right? In the process, you might be, oh, this looks like an airport. You start building in that direction. Or this actually looks a little bit Russian. So let's create these bubbly towers and this, you know, whatever it is. That's how we do it. But we have to have the building blocks. Once you have the building blocks, you have this amazing brain who's so 
good at associating and going from one thing to another and getting ideas. But the ideas are not magically happening from above. The ideas happen in a very specific way in your brain. This is not the case, something new comes out, totally original. I don't know where it came from. It must be an angel, it must be from above, inspiration. It's amazing. And we love to, to be in this zone because it makes guitar playing very special, godlike, right? Um, and the people who are good at improvising and, and producing new stuff all the time are just godlike people that we can look up to, we can listen to their music, we can even start playing songs they wrote, and we can start you know, listening to what they say and starting to just you know, a little bit be like them, just a little bit, right? And that is religion, <laughs> right? It basically is, it's the same me mechanism inside of us, but if we drop out of that for a second, and, and say, oh, listen to the, to the good book that says, thou shalt not have any other gods than me, <laughs> right? And you stop the, 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 you know, the worshipping of human gods. Oh, this kid becomes deep suddenly. Um, and we look at what is actually going on. Then what is look going on is associating. It's like, let's say you have a square here, right? And we're talking about the castle. And, that, and it says house, right? This is house, this is a tiny little square on your screen. But from that, you start building and suddenly you, you see a castle inside of your mind because that's kind of close, right? It's like stepping from one related thing to another. And from castle, you suddenly see like a Russian fairy tale, right? Because that castle, you know, something happens like a mutation, right? You start building something and then involuntarily, you give yourself a new idea. Exactly the same thing that ha happens when you paint. If you watch Bob Ross's uh, videos, you know that he gets ideas as he's painting. And then you, oh, I see something. I see something over here, right? <laughs> and then he starts painting that. And that's the process of being created. But what happens in the moment he says, oh, I see something developing over here, he's painting a picture. And then some, suddenly over here, he sees like a little pond or whatever that appears. That's associating. It's as simple as that. And that is, if you look at your brain from the inside and we, we were to create a model of it, it would be like a vast field, like, you know, 3D here from outside. You got the horizon out here and then you got like just a vast field of, of words when you speak or licks or sequences or whatever building blocks we're talking about. And it's just as far as your eye can see. It's like when it comes to language, every single little area is a word or a sentence. And we jump from one word to another. We're going in one direction like here, right? And on our way, we jump to all kinds of, of associations. Like when you're dreaming. Why do we analyze our dreams? Or why do some people do it? Because they're a reflection of what are the associations that are closest to each other? Why does your dad remind you of porridge? And why does porridge remind you of ghosts, right? You know these weird dreams. You go into something and you just accept every situation you're in, in the dream, right? So you speak to your dad, suddenly you look over his shoulder and there is a huge mountain of porridge. Why is that, right? And we try to analyze and see a meaning in that. The only meaning there is, is that for your brain, that is a natural association. <laughs> and you know, some, you know, you might find something interesting in that, right? Or you, you, you talk to your grandma and your grandma reminds you of Christmas and Christmas reminds you of presents and presents reminds you of the car you want and have been looking at, right? Looking forward to stuff. And the car you want reminds you of bankruptcy because, you know, you've seen this friend once who bought a hugely expensive car and went bankrupt and bankruptcy reminds you of something else. And suddenly you're off to a very poor path here, right? That's association. The brain does it all the time. You constantly chatter with yourself in the head, right? Blah, 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 blah. You know, talk all day from one thing to another, you know, constantly. When you dream, that continues. Just from one thing to another. So what is improvisation? It's just that. And you can't really tell what you associate between. So when you start playing guitar here, right? And, you know, and you start saying... See, see if you can, in your mind, imagine the next line. Just in your mind, you know, right? So let's build a rhythm here so we have some some timing to it. 
right? And what comes after? Sing it in your head. I hear something like, right? What comes after that? Right, let me just play it again. Right? It's association. And the, the, the reason why I can do that is because I can, I can um, convert what's in my mind to, to notes right away. Right? Right away. And it's, it, it goes both ways because it's not like, you know, I can play anything I can hear in my mind necessarily. It's very, what I hear in my mind is very influenced by what I can play on the guitar. So the skill level and the associations go hand in hand because what I can play on the guitar are building blocks of association. So the more options I have at any given point on the neck, melodically, scale-wise, whatever, and this is not a, a video about learning a lot of scales and arpeggios, it's, it's about the opposite. The more options I have, the more I can build you know, like having a huge amount of Lego blocks in different colors and shapes and all kinds of stuff, then you can build more. The more tools you have, but the tools are not what you think. It's not arpeggios and a ton of scales. But so that's really what improvisation is. It's associating between different lines. And that's why when we pick up our guitar, we know one scale shape or ten or a thousand scale shapes and ten licks. We still can't improvise because those are not building blocks of improvisation. That's the whole that's the whole mystery here is that we don't know what improvisation is. So, so let's say, okay, what is a lick? It's a sentence, right? If you're watching any of my other videos, it's like a sentence, right? So I learn like 10 sentences, 10 different licks. You could say that the notes are letters, right? And then you have a word, like a word might be, you know, right? That's a little word. And a sentence might be. And a whole solo is a story, right? So I learned 10 different sentences, like learning them by heart, like reading a book and then taking the first 10 sentences and then learning them so you know them and you can remember them, you can fire them off. You might be able to change them a little even. Yeah, improvisation, no, right? But you have 10 sentences and then the music is playing in the background and somebody says, no, improvise. But I only, I get 10 licks and I got a, you know, a couple of scales. How, how am I just gonna come up with something new, right? On the spot, it's impossible. But you just have to look within and no, you don't have to look within. You got 10 sentences. Try making a story with that, right? Or 20 sentences or a hundred sentences and a hundred scale. It doesn't work like that. We need an approach that actually works. We need to attack this at the level on, of, of, of building blocks, basically, right? And if we do that, we're home free. We can actually start magically improvising, engaging the brain's ability to associate between the little building blocks, the little fields of jumping between words, jumping between. But isn't that just a lick, Klaus? No, I never played that before in my life. It has some elements of stuff I've been playing before. Right? Licks are not bad. It's just that we need, you know, I, I'm going to produce a, a, a couple of videos about this so we go into more detail so you know the basic building blocks, what to learn, what to focus on here on YouTube, absolutely for free. So uh, stick with me and we'll go through all the elements so you can start really working on your improvisational skills and actually get some results instead of just floundering and, and having that idea that you should be able to do something and you just can't. And what happens in that zone is you start concluding, start thinking that you can't do it, that it's some magical ability that you have to learn. But it's not. It's just bits and bytes. Once you start focusing on them, you can actually do it. We got a new program out. Surprise. That is an eight week process where I'm going to, you know, hammer, hammer away at this, you know, just go through a training system where we take each level of skill and build our improvisational skills bit by bit. But you can start already with these videos here and start focusing in a totally new way on improvisation. But I would go check out the program and see what we got for you there because it's really, it's like a cure. It's a boot camp of practical exercises and insights that you can use to build your improvisational skills from the bottom up 
So you can really do this no matter who you are or how talented you think you are. Okay, so go check that out. Click the link below the video. Sign up for our free program on Legato. And I'll see you tomorrow in uh, the next video about improvisation. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.